Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark and I'm your host. And on today's how-to, we're going to discuss how to determine and install the correct linear guides. And here to help us out is Jeff Lighthouser. And Jeff is with Thompson Linear. And uh, welcome to the program. Thanks, Tom. We have got uh, a lot of stuff on here that's kind of interesting, a lot of sliding, a lot of guiding going on here. Exactly what are we going to accomplish today, Jeff? Well, we're going to learn two things. First off, how to apply a linear guide, how to select the proper linear guide for your application. And then secondly, how to install that. All right, well, where do we start? Well, first off, you have to understand your customer's needs and what are the major attributes in their application. And when we start talking about attributes, we're talking about load, life, accuracy, repeatability, speed or velocity, ease of installation, and that thing that nobody cares about, cost. Cost, bottom line, yeah. <laughs> now, what application examples are going to help us understand uh, where and why to use the different linear guides based on the factors that you just mentioned? When you really start to think about accuracy and repeatability and, and the most load in, in, in the package, uh, the application that comes to mind first would be machine tools. Okay. And machine tools pretty much always use profile rail because of the fact they, they use ultra precision grades and everything has to be pristine or perfect. Obviously that tr translates into good parts coming off of that machine. Now I know we got two rails here, but there's also a single rail as well, isn't there? Yes, there is. And if you're in a real small package and you can only use a single rail, you have to use square rail because round rail, there's nothing to keep it from rotating. Also, other applications where you might want to use square rail when you get into the medical industry, CAT scans, MRIs, okay. uh, x-ray equipment, because you're trying to get uh, a lot of load capacity in a small package, you don't want a lot of machine, you want the person. Well, what about factor. round rail? What's the benefit of using round rail then? Well, round rail has uh, a couple benefits. One, here your square rail is completely supported. Mm -hmm. Some applications you can't do that. We end support it or intermittently support it. And at that type of application, you're going to use round rail because round rail gives you plus or minus a half a degree misalignment. It also allows you to install a lot easier. You don't have to be worried that your base plate is ground. So you get a reduction in cost by ease of installation. So when you start talking about things like packaging equipment, you know, things that we see in the, in the grocery store all the time. We don't care if our beer is perfectly centered in that six pack. We just want to make sure it's in that six pack. <laughs> now, to help us visually understand what's going on here, you actually brought something called a misalignment rig. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. But as I look at this and I'm, I'm playing with this right here, it doesn't look misaligned. What do we got going on here? Well, actually it's not misaligned and that's the first stage of this. Okay. Everything is aligned perfect so you can see that the, the square rail and the round rail move fine. Okay. You, a little more drag on the square rail but that's because square rail has a longitudinal seal that runs along the length of it. So it's, it's fine in this state. Okay. Well, before we move on that, let's put our PPE on because we always have to have that because I know you're going to do something here. Uh, okay. Show me how we misalign this stuff. Okay, well, I'm going to misalign this by torquing down on this thumb screw. Misalignment comes in a lot of different ways. In this case, I've just warped this plate. Okay. Okay, it can come where your when I'm end supporting, the shaft would deflect. Got it. Okay, uh, you could have your pillow block skewed slightly, or maybe your base plate isn't totally flat. It could be that as you apply the load in the application, it creates the misalignment. Got it. So that being said, we've misaligned this now, and you can see that the round rail will move fine. Yeah, that, that's not making a good noise first off. And oh yeah, that's a lot tougher to move there. The round rail, no problem though. If you tried to use a square rail, it would prematurely fail. Even if you have a little mis misalignment in your application, you're taking life away from the profile rail, looking for premature failure. That's going to uh, cost you in the uh, end and the round rail would work just fine. Okay, well, I don't like the misalignment, so I want to know how to install this stuff correctly, and you're going to tell us how to do that. Well, in this case, we have two uh, square rails, and normally when you install square rail in most applications, like your machine tool, they would have a reference edge. Okay. An uh, edge that's perfectly machined that you butt 
the rail against. Every profile rail and round rail on the support has a reference edge. You can tell by looking at it, it's much more shiny than the other side. Okay. Uh, anyway, in this case, we don't have a reference edge. So I'm going to take my square and make sure that the rail is parallel to the plate I'm mounting to. And I do that by running it along like this, mm -hmm. and it would be perfectly parallel. I took the liberty of already tightening this down to save us some time, and I've also mounted the spacer block to the carriage. Now I'm going to do that to the other carriage here. And then when I'm done doing that, mm -hmm. I would mount the top plate. All right, I'll help you with that. Okay. And then we would traverse this back and forth, and you can see how the rail floats in. Got it. Now once it's floated in, I tighten it down. Obviously, we'd have to lubricate the system. Um, one last thing. The reason we use the spacer blocks here is normally you would have to drive this system. So we, there's plenty of space now to install a ball screw with a flange. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you very much for Excellent having me. Excellent demonstration. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's Jeff Lighthouser, and he's with Thompson Linear. And uh, if you have any more questions on this, if you need some more information, don't forget to contact the Motion Industries branch location that's nearest you. Hopefully this will help you in your practical application. And as you saw, we wore our PPE, both Jeff and I did for the entire operation. Always wear the proper PPE for whatever your job is at your plant or your shop. And also don't forget to look for other Motion Industries videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks so much for watching.